Sidewarners mais especiais da história, que óbvio é o Sidewarner de Duna, parte 2. Eu sou Valentina Pugarim e hoje eu trouxe para vocês entrevistas, tapete vermelho com as estrelas, que são incríveis e, claro, com os fãs! possible futures all at once. And in so many futures, our enemies prevail. But I do see a way. There is a narrow way through. Como se eu fosse alguém da família Harkonnen E tá aqui a minha irmã Harkonnen, Gabi Kahn Olá. Oi Brasil Olá. A gente vai mostrar pra vocês o que, que a gente conversou com esses atores maravilhosos Vamos lá A Warner me mandou pra cidade do México Pra essa experiência incrível Onde eu pude entrevistar o elenco na Junket E também num tapete vermelho espetacular Eu nunca vi nada como isso Isso é incrível Eu não acho que eu nunca vi nada como isso aqui no México México been warned that Mexican fans were very enthusiastic. That's beyond my expectations. What is it about Dune that you got to to do for the first time that has nothing to do with anything you've done before? Lose weight. I lost weight in the desert. Honestly, I was just in awe every day. Come on, like I just want to be part of your gang everywhere you go. It's been one of the most enjoyable press tours because we just can't stop like flattering each other. Can you teach us really quickly a little bit of the Fremen walk, maybe? Oh, man. It's a little glide to the that? right, a little glide to the left. Right to the right. A slow right. step, fast oh, step, and then a glide to the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. 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 Okay, you got it Thank down. you, thank you so much. Que você vai amar, não só porque ele saiu do mundo dos livros, que é muito legal, mas também por causa do elenco. A gente tem simplesmente Zendaya e Florence Pugh, e agora também, juntando ali com o Paul Atreides, que é o nosso time de Chalamet, a gente trouxe Austin Butler, que tá sem sobrancelha, careca e bem assustador como vilão do filme. I wanted to ask you both because I feel like these characters are sort of similar in the background, especially in the book. So, how do you feel like that creates the perfect balance to make the cinematic experience, which is, by the way, unlike anything I've ever seen before? I agree, but I think I think it's the classic head-to-head. -head. A lot of my favorite films have that, you know, where uh, geek out for a second. But I've talked about it before. But in the Dark Knight, I love in the Dark Knight, or just throughout the the history of Batman comics, even that, you know. Uh, Batman and Joker can be more different in many ways, and yet they're the perfect opposites. I think Denise thread a perfect needle, you know, without it feeling cheesy or predictable, of two sort of figureheads going head to head. One with hair. <laughs> Amazing hair, by the way. <laughs> Fader Arthur, he's psychotic. He grew up in this brutality and um, and that really, that, that creates the person that we see, what it would be like to have the Baron as, as your father figure and, <laughs> um, and Raban as your brother, you know, I mean, it's, it's a really violent world that, that he grew up in. And uh, when you see the sun outside and you realize that it doesn't shine color on the world, uh, you think about what that does to you as well, you know? <laughs> your spirit. Yeah. E para completar esse elenco icônico, a gente também trouxe de volta o Josh Brolin. Ele é um dos professores mais antigos do time de Chalamet, né? Do Paul Atreides. E é claro que eu conversei um pouco com ele sobre os bastidores do filme, gente. Que querido ele! Every time you're shooting in the desert, what are the rules of production like? Do you have a time frame to shoot in that sun? Like, what are the rules you have to follow to That's do That's about the only one. You oh, have really? a certain time frame. Yeah, but even like then, the we didn't follow it. Yeah, no, yeah, if you shoot in the morning and, and, and then you shoot later on in the afternoon. I think we did that a few times and then it was we lost so much time that you just have to deal. So there were times I was out there in the still suit with the big bubble around my head and it was 105 degrees and you can't drink anything because you have the big bubble on your head that is impossible to get off. And so you, you and I'm going to talk about suffering, no, but, but we you, love you feel things. like you earn your stay. It's very hard to feel like you're having a bad day yeah. or something is tough, you know? I think even with learning the um, 
the fight choreography. We have such an incredible team, um, set team. I don't know, I don't know if I had like the most challenging day, but I did really enjoy the day of, uh, of doing my fight scene because we did it in a motion capture studio. Oh wow. Because my costume wasn't the most flexible. Mm -hmm. We get yeah, we, the, the shell, <laughs> the shell <laughs> at, yeah. that we're in the scene yeah. and I'm just like, <laughs> and my, my armor is the same size as Josh's armor and mm. Javier's yeah. armor. So I, I I felt like I just looked like this like little girl in this like big over like sized thing. But then no. he said he was like, no, I promise you look cool. And I you was like, look thanks. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Let me fight beside you. E tem outra coisa que você vai amar em Duna 2, são as cenas de ação e de batalha. Aí é óbvio que eu fui conversar com Denis Villeneuve, o homem, o gênio por trás desse filme. It felt for me that you did a lot of those very interesting close-ups on the actors and also these very big shots, you know, of the desert and all that. Why were you doing those uh, contrasting shots with Greg Frazier? Why did you need that? They, uh, it all came from the idea that the book is very internal, the idea that in the book, you have access to the thought process of the character. Yeah. You have access to their uh, everything. It's a very paranoid book where every character uh, is trying to strategize how to survive, and all and uh, uh, all characters are are are, uh, are afraid to be betrayed by other characters. And you have a but I didn't want to hear that thought process. I wanted to feel it. I wanted a lot to in the inside the, of their yeah, head, exactly. right? And I and I, I always I always believe that one of the best most powerful weapon I have as a filmmaker is actors. I mean, there were scenes that I didn't, you know, that I've read in the book that I didn't know how they were going to transpire into the movie. And a lot of times, that because you have to truncate in a movie, a lot of times you just, that's why dialogue is so important, you know, and the specificity of, of dialogue. And yet, what Denis does is he'll, he'll be super specific about what he writes. Yeah. And then we get on the set and then he says, this isn't working, do something else. He's able to see very large scope, um, kind of, uh, he's a large scope visionary, but he also cares equally, if not more, about the intimacy and the emotion of a story. Do you remember any details or spoilers from the book that you wanted for sure put in your performance in the movie? Ooh, that's a good question. One thing that I really appreciated, I mean, it's not like a specific factor, but just in terms of the writing, I loved how you don't meet her for such a long time, but you yes. only get her introductions. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that was so mysterious and alluring and like, already she's fact heavy. Yeah. And I did kind of want that to translate, not just about her narrating, but like, she's someone that has so much information, but is still so mysterious, but is still trying to collect information. Yeah. And yet she's so calm and so, um, quiet through it all. And so I really did want to kind of like bring that I level of, of thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Actually, yes. yes, perfect mysterious. Done. Just perfect level. Just really mysterious. And doing her little podcast in the movie. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. She was doing I that. Know. I know it. She's doing a podcast. She's gonna invite Chani on at some point. Yeah. <laughs> we'll sit down. Let's see. So, so Chani, tell me, how did you meet Paul? <laughs> Your blood comes from Dukes and. Great houses. We don't have that here. Here, we're equal. Men and women alike. What we do, we do for the benefit of all. Well, I'd very much like to be equal to you. Maybe I'll show you the way. I feel like Dune is ultimately a love story. Um, why do you think this is a story unlike anything we've seen before? Yeah, I think uh, uh, what Denis is masters at is, is, is being able to carve out a story that feels human when the scope feels massive and, and the world feels quite literally otherworldly. For us, I think it was, it was almost a bit of a challenge mm -hmm. to find because I think these characters are not just like high schoolers, <laughs> you know, living normal lives that get to like go on dates and whatever, you know, there's so much um, that they're in the midst of and so much, I think, uh, pain and weight on their shoulders. So I don't know, I, I think for us, it was just about earning and deserving that love story and, and making sure we tracked it 
no matter what kind of amazing action sequence is happening, there's always, this, you know, mm. a little bit of heartbreak happening mm. too. <laughs> My allegiance is to you. Do you believe me? Is there something you're jealous of each other that you got to do on screen and the other one didn't? You know yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous of both of you. Come on. I, mean, I can say the the obvious things, which is like the costumes <laughs> and things like that, which would be lovely to wear these gorgeous things. Um, but um, what I loved about the way you interpreted Princess Irulan is that control, and I would mm. have loved to, I don't know, be in the room while it was mm. happening at least. Are you prepared? You've been preparing me my whole life. We've been partnered together for the last week talking about this. We're both so excited because both of us do the opposite things with our characters. Mm -hmm. like, Chani is so fiery and so she's out in the elements. Like, this is her life. She's tough. She has an entire people to be defending and being protective of. And then Irulan is kind of not seeing any of this. She's she's in a completely different uh, place. She uh, doesn't have to witness any of the hardships that Chani does. And I think, like, seeing what happens next, seeing both of us appreciating what the other, other actor has done um, has been a very exciting thing to talk about. May thy knife chip and shatter. May thy knife chip and shatter. <laughs> You both have the chance the chance to, by the end of the movie, mm -hmm. near your battle scene, to share the room with almost everyone from yeah. the cast. What's that day of shooting like when you know that you're getting on set and almost the whole cast is going to be in the same room? Uh, it was one of the most incredible days on set I've yeah. ever had. Yeah, I, I, I admire every one of those actors so much. Mm -hmm. and, and we worked so hard for many months beforehand and then finally, we got to it's have true, that right? moment, it's true. you know, and and, uh, and then we presented it to everyone. Yeah, and then you presented <laughs> it. Yeah. Work, yeah. It felt like opening night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of us trying to kill each other. <laughs> I am Paul Petrides, Duke of Arrakis. Our enemies are all around us. Together, we can bury them. Épico da nossa geração, eu tenho certeza que você vai amar assistir esse filme na maior tela de cinema possível que você arranjar. Então não perca o filme estreia no cinema dia 29 de fevereiro. É isso, gente. Eu sou a Valentina Bulgarin e esse foi o nosso incrível Inside Warner Duna, parte 2. Tchau!